Let's learn how to make a curved shader graph like Animal Crossing in Unity. If we take a look at Animal Crossing's gameplay, I want to make a really important call out here. Um, start to notice exactly where the world starts to have that curved world effect. And you will notice that it's really only when the player goes from front to back or back to front but the world does not change, however, if you move from left to right. So the world of Animal Crossing is not as perfectly spherical as I originally thought it was, and I'm sure many others. So if we want to recreate this effect, we really have to dive into exactly how they're doing it. So before we dive into the shader graph, I figured the best way to do this would be to actually show you what effect that we are creating. So. I have um, my plane right here, my game plane, and the effect that we're going to be creating essentially, instead of the player walking around here, uh, we want it to be curved. So when they go from front to back, we're just going to do something like this. We turn it that way. This is the effect that we are going to be creating. But the important part here that the player and the camera are always going to be at the apex of this effect. So as the player moves from front to back, we're going to see an effect something like this happening, depending on which way the player is moving. So as the player moves, we're going to see something kind of like this, almost like a curvy treadmill type effect. But we have to know in the world space where the camera is, since this is going to be like a typical game, the camera is going to be following the player so we can access the position of the camera in regards to the world. And something else I want to mention too is that when we're creating this shape, this shape is a parabola and the shape that we want to create is a negative parabola. So instead of x squared, we have negative x squared. And depending on where the camera is, we'll determine where the world starts to bend, okay? Okay, let's get into it. Here's the scene I created before making the video, and as you can see, it's like a big cylinder, not really a sphere. And as I change my position along the Z axis, the vertex positions change with me. And that's all we're really doing here, is transforming the vertex positions based on the position of the camera. But let's start from scratch. I'm going to create a new scene and name it Curved World. I should also mention that we're going to be using Shader Graph, which is only available in URP or HDRP. So if you don't know what that means, I'll put a link on the screen for you to check out. But in our new scene, I'm going to add in a plane, zero out its coordinates, and I'm going to scale it up a bit. Now that we have that, let's create our shader. I'm going to right click, go to Create, New Shader Graph, URP, and then Lit. And all Lit means is that we want our shader to be affected by light. I'm going to name mine Curved World, double click, and let's open up Shader Graph. I also want to mention that this shader is based on a shader by the creator Knotslot, which I will link his video below. It's a great video and it dives into some more advanced concepts with this shader. The reason I'm even making this video is one, the interface is a bit different from a few years ago, so this is a bit more up to date. Two, I want to dive into how each of the nodes actually work and why we're setting it up the way that it is. And three, I want to show you how to actually go about setting up a very similar environment to Animal Crossing. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the position of the camera in regards to the position of the plane. So we're going to add in a position node and a camera node. Keep in mind, the camera will have a script on it that will be following the player, so this is almost a way to calculate where the player is in the world. We are then going to subtract the camera position from the world position of the plane using a subtract node. And the subtract node takes in two values, and it is A minus B. And the output of this is a vector three value, so an X, Y, and a Z value. But since we only want this effect to happen when the player is moving to the front or to the back, not when moving side to side, we only need to extract the Z value from this equation. We only care if Z value is changing. To do this, we're going to add in a split node. And it's a little confusing because the values here say RGBA, 
but you can also use this node when it comes to vectors as well. And in the case of vectors, these values are actually X, Y, Z, and W. In this case, B is equal to Z, and from here we want to alter the Z value. This is where our parabola comes in. We're going to plug our Z value into a power node, power as in X to the power of two, if we remember our parabola formula from earlier. But what if we want to change the scale of the parabola? What if we want to change how curvy the world is? Well, in our math formula, that would look something like this. We would multiply x squared by a number to change the shape of the parabola. So that's exactly what we need to do in our graph. We need to add a multiply node and connect a float value into that multiply node. But before I get ahead of myself, I think it's important to keep our eyes on the prize here. The prize being an altered vector three value. We still need to keep track of what exactly our formula is doing. And right now we just have an altered Z value, but ultimately we need an entire set of X, Y, Z values. So let's add in a vector three node and plug our new value in. Now, even though we grabbed our Z value out, we need to plug this into the Y slot here because we want this effect to happen over the Y axis, just like a parabola. Now let's multiply this value by a float so that we can control the strength of the curve. I'm going to add in a float node and plug it into the multiply node here. I'd recommend leaving the default value at zero and just change it in the inspector so you can see the results in real time. But if you do decide to set a default value, keep in mind we're talking teeny tiny numbers here, like 0.001 type values. And if you set a value and your preview shape disappears, it is because that number is too high. And let's also make sure that we turn this float value into a property so that we can see it in the inspector. So now we have our Y value set up and we're ready to go, but we need to make the connection between our new Y value and how that actually translates to the object that has the material on it, in this case, our plane. Our ultimate goal is to have a new vector three value. And right now, even though we've plugged our Y value into a vector three node, X and Z are defaulting to zero and not taking in the relevant vector information from the scene. So we need to add the plane's position, its vector three value to this new vector three value that we've just created. So we're going to add an add node, plug in our vector three value and plug in the position node, which will yield us a new vector three. The last thing we need to do before we plug this into the final output node is add a transform node. The original position node is using world space, which is what we want. We want to access the vertex information of the plane in regards to the entire scene, not to just itself. However, the final output node only accepts vector three values in object space, so we just have to convert it at the end. We can finally plug in our add node into our transform node, make sure that it's converting the space from world space to object space, and then plug it into the position slot in the output node. Now let's switch back to the editor and apply this to our plane. To apply a shader to an object, we first have to create a new material. So I'm going to create a new material and name it curvy. To add a shader to this material, I need to find the shader dropdown at the very top here. But if I click into the dropdown, I can see a section here for shader graph shaders, which the shader we just created is under. With that done, I can drag and drop my new material onto my plane. Now we can play around with the strength a little bit here. And notice these are very small numbers. And I also have the ability to bend the plane upwards if the number is positive and downwards if the number is negative. You may want to keep it this way, but if you intend to only have this effect facing downwards, we can go back into our shader graph and add a negate node, which will just turn any positive number negative. It's not totally necessary, but it can be annoying to type in that negative sign over and over again, so it is a time saver. Now let's add a way for you to add a texture like the green grass in Animal Crossing. I've already downloaded the texture from online, but we're going to add a way in our shader to tile the pattern and be able to change it from the inspector. Inside Shader Graph, if we want to add a texture, we need to add a sample texture 2D node and plug it into the base color. You could plug a texture in here and call it a day, but I'm going to add a 2D texture asset node, turn it into a property, 
and then plug it into the texture slot here just so I can add textures from the inspector. Now to tile our texture, we need to add a tiling and offset node and plug this into the UV slot on our sample texture 2D node. The default for tiling is one and one, which is no tiling. Same thing here. You could set some default values here and call it a day, but I want to be able to see how much tiling is needed via the inspector. Now the tiling slot takes two values, an X and a Y, but if I change one and not the other, I'm going to get some weird stretching happening. So I ideally want these values to be the same, so the scale is always the same. Therefore, I'm going to plug in a float value here and turn it into a property so that I can control it from the inspector. Now heading back over to our scene view, I can now click on our shader, plug in the Animal Crossing texture that I downloaded, and start messing around with the tiling value to get the right look. Now this is the bulk of our work right here, but if you want your world to look like Animal Crossing, you have to do one more thing to the objects in your scene. Since the shader we just created is essentially vertex displacement, if you don't add this shader to the objects in your scene as well as your ground floor, the objects in your scene will look like they're floating or sinking depending on your viewpoint. There's a fix for that though. We simply have to create new materials for the objects that we want to be in our scene. These new materials need to have the new shader on them and luckily, since we have the texture broken out, it's not too much of a lift. After we've done that, we just need to make sure that the curve strength is the same number as what's on our plane, and we're good to go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.